Okay, so here, here I am once again, picking up for a second session with Como Rebi by Clace. Um, yesterday we had just, um, just passed, uh, I think it was the scene with the TV report on the 100th, 100th anniversary of Como Rebi, and uh, we had met our counselor for the first or second time, and we just had a very, very lovely conversation with uh, Isaac. Como Rebi deals with mental health topics that some may find distressing. All right, we're going to load and load up to the fragment map there. And, um, hmm. Yeah, let's do this one. I would like Experience. to go. Experience supplemental fragment. Delta's arrival. I would like to go in order as much as possible. Even though uh, I feel like the way this is written will probably will probably facilitate um, playing this out of order. I would like to go in order as much as possible. Delta has officially arrived! Oh my gosh. So much fanfare. Sweet! And not a moment too soon. Everything going good so far? Have we met? I don't think we've met yeah, this guy. Yeah, definitely good. And listen up. All that stuff Isaac yapped about, it's totally true. <laughs> hey! <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> he means that in a good way, Delta. Worry. It's not like you're a stranger. That gives you an instant edge in my books. Oh, good. Yeah, reputation was definitely preceded. We heard all kinds of things. Some of them were even good. <laughs> Either way, it's nice to see somebody live up to the hype. Thanks for coming. And allow me to say, welcome aboard. Oh, good. These guys are going to be my new housemates. So... I'm glad things are off to a good start. Yeah, I'll echo that one. Welcome aboard. Remember, now that you're in the group chat, <laughs> it's official. Oh yeah, there's a group chat and that's where... Oh yes, that's where these supplemental fragments t come from. They come from the group chat. So now it is before? official. It just doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> okay. You're better now. Thanks. This is my new identity. Guys, remember when I told you to give Delta a normal greeting? Nope. Typical. Well, now that the red carpet is rolled out, you still on for this weekend, Taylor? Yeah. Excited to see what all the fuss is about. You're being way too secretive. No way we're just going to the club. Taylor, this rabbit guy is Taylor. And a lot of talk about this weekend coming up. Don't worry, it'll all make sense. I know discretion isn't exactly your strong suit. And subtlety isn't yours, but I'll yield. I already told my viewers I wasn't streaming anyway. Not even an IRL. Whatever you've got planned, I'll take it to the grave. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good. I noticed that the grave was highlighted in red there, probably just because, um, and I, I, I noticed that that the phrase suicidal ideations was also highlighted in red earlier, probably because these are just, um, difficult topics, but hopefully that is not foreshadowing anybody. I have a theory. Yeah? Let's hear it, Dante. I think Isaac finally cracked. Needs help hiding a body. Not true. And what proof do you have? You're still alive. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put a stop to that one real quick. I don't want this group chat putting me up on a witness stand one day. 
No scandals. Got it. Right. No scandals. <laughs> Isaac looks like he's disappointed. Ugh, you're so boring. Here's something that might change your mind, then. There's a chance we could end up on the news. Oh no, that can't be Pressure! Good. <laughs> the news? And you thought we were being extra. Anything else you want to drop on us? Don't worry, I'll be nice. Not sure. Most of this is up in the air. Well, you promised to be fun, so I guess that's all I need. Even if it feels like you're making everything up as you go along. You know me, I'd never do that. And trust me, it'll be amazing. Just don't drink too much. You don't want a repeat of, uh, the incident. Not my proudest moment. Keep it down around Delta, all right? Then I guess you should be on your best behavior. <laughs> Blackmail? What did I just say about scandals? Oh my gosh. Given that, given that such an event as the incident exists in this group's history, I'm guessing that this weekend is not going to be a repeat. So that helps. That helps to um, helps to to bolster my optimism a bit. Hey, it's only a scandal if he turns it into one. That's not how that works. And look, Delta hasn't even said anything. I I knew we'd scare them away in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Send a popcorn order to try breaking the ice. I don't really want to comment on the welcome, because I, f I feel like it has been a decent welcome. <laughs> I, Perfect response. I am observing with great delight. I knew you were going to be our comic relief, Delta. Do a good job, and you'll go from guest star to main cast. Easy. <laughs> oh, good. And there goes Dante, treating everything like a work of fiction. This is real life, dude. It doesn't always work out like you expect. This is real life, dude. But when it does, it's always worth the wait. Besides, it's not like a little silver lining ever hurt anybody. I'm kind of missing the ability to go back in the conversations. Um, that isn't given to us here, which, you know, kind of like in real life, you can't go back. You can't, you, you can't actually go back in real life. But, um, but I'm noticing that, that there are times when I wish I could go back just one or two. Um, pages. When it does, it's also worth the wait. Besides, it's not like this. Except for the people it hurt, you mean. Anyway, there's lots to do, so we should get back to it. The sooner we help Delta settle in, the sooner we can relax. Ah, yes. Ooh, crack open a cold one for me. I need to start streaming. Hopefully I can retain some of the followers I got from that charity gig. Streaming the move-in? <laughs> that would You're be something. You're gonna be fine. It's not like you were doing bad to begin with, but yeah, time to put down our phones. Labor awaits. Wait, were we just texting all in the same room? As, like, perhaps, I don't know. Perhaps we are a bit spread out, but it is time to help me move in, it seems. Let me know how it goes. I'll come and meet Delta soon enough. Okay. Sounds great. See ya. So I do feel like it's a little strange that it's presented like a normal conversation um, when it's really a conversation that is happening over over a group text. Um, like, who was in the apartment at that time? Was it myself and Dante, or, or what? I, I don't know. Where was everyone else? Um, you, you don't always get to know where everyone else is when you're texting in real life. But you also don't get to see their facial expressions. Which, um. But anyway, let's see what this one is. Experience, supplemental fragment, noise complaint. Uh, Experience, supplemental fragment, 
Shady business. So, being that I kind of want to see these in order, let me do another supplemental fragment because I want to see what happened after I moved in. Um, of course, this one could be the actual moving in, but let, let me see what this one is. Experience supplemental fragment. Noise complaint. some shut eye and I have work right now music helps me focus yep I'm trying to sleep when someone else is trying not to sleep not always a good time then put on some headphones Dante yeah you could or you could put in some earplugs oh seriously I'm being nice hey both of you Stop. This group chat isn't the place for your lover's quarrel. I'm trying to stream, and you keep blowing up my phone. <laughs> Again, reminding us that it is a group chat and not an actual conversation that's happening through the walls of this apartment, which, again, is a little, a little, a little weird, but okay. Can't you just turn it off, then? The world doesn't revolve around you, man. Taylor, pull your viewers and see what they say. No. But you owe me one! Remember that net outage during your charity stream? Ah, fine, hold on. Several minutes pass without any chat activity. Just as I thought. They don't care. They don't they don't care about what? Ouch. Hold on. I actually just got a $50 donation. It says Dante's headphone fund. Oh my gosh. Then I win! <laughs> I think Dante wins, actually. Being stubborn pays off once again. Transfer you that say money so. to me and I'll buy a pair tomorrow. Isaac, one more night with the music and you'll all be over. I promise. Fine. But if you don't follow through, I'm raising your rent. Controversial. Anyway, now you both owe me one. In the future, work this out at home, all right? Don't make me take advantage of my viewers. It feels wrong. <laughs> what does he mean by work this out at home, though? I mean, like, are we not at home? There. Oh no, another donation! <laughs> You've started! Personally, I see this as a win. Score. Engagement is always a good thing, isn't it? Engage with your viewers. Okay, uh, it's time for a real Experience life. pivotal fragment. A real First life. First arrival. First arrival. Maybe this will feature moving in. The people we end up hating are usually the ones we love the most. Good looking house. I grabbed my bags from the trunk. An easy task, as I made sure to pack light. The point of this journey was to leave my baggage behind, not carry it with me. Isaac steps out, uh, steps in to help out, and I turn to face the house, my new home. Well, what do you think? Pictures don't do it justice, do they? Eh, it has its quirks, but served all of us just fine. <laughs> I 
I don't get how this is how this is a a peacemaking response. It was better in the pictures, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna express some homesickness. Wish I had a place like this back at home. No need to think about it like that. This is your home now, Delta. Even Dante is excited to meet you. And knowing him, <laughs> that's saying a lot. It's never a bad idea to liven things up. To be honest, I think we needed this too. He smiles at me before closing the trunk and locking everything up. I carry two of my bags while he carries the other two. An equal team. We make our way to the front door and place everything down in sync. Hold on. He pulls out his phone and holds it up against the entry scanner. There's that small beep. A small beep sounds and then a moment later the door unlocks. At least the security system protecting this house was solid. At least <laughs> I I have some trust in, in Dante. But maybe the narrator Of course the narrator is is feeling a bit wary. Moving to a new place. Welcome home, Isaac. You may leave the house two more times today. Oh crap. Remember, a good score makes a good citizen. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So that is like the voice of the system. It's the same voice that is telling me about the fragments when we go to, um, to the fragment map. Only allowed to leave the house, what, three times in a day. I would not survive. I'm, I I'm just so clumsy and forgetful that sometimes I need to go back and forth um, inside and out of my house a couple times before before going somewhere because I've forgotten something. I definitely mute this stuff the other day. Dante must have freaked out and removed my mod again. Oh, and here I'm, I'm noticing the yellow highlight. Um, I've, I've seen that, I've seen that, but I haven't really tracked what words it's been on. Um, it seems to just be for emphasis or emphasis. That's true. Tempering with the system at home was a big deal. I don't think Isaac was up to anything shady, though. He probably just likes silence. Typically, people would mess with the system when they had something worth hiding. Well, let's get you settled. With how tired you were in the car, I guess you deserve a nap. But hmm. don't mess up your sleep schedule. You gotta watch that report tomorrow. Oh, don't remind me. I nod, and now that the door is open, we pick everything up. Using a shoulder to nudge the door open, we slowly enter the house. I've seen so many pictures of this place, but seeing it for real was incredible. The living room is incredibly spacious. It looked much smaller when I saw it online. <laughs> That's something unusual. Usually pictures online are just doctored to make the, sp the place look larger than it is. One thing that stands out to me, however, is the lack of integrated technology. It looks like a living room frozen in time around 30 years ago. Interesting. Yeah, a lot can change in 30 years' time. This sight, combined with how Isaac acted at the door, revealed one thing. He must not be a big fan of the system. Not everyone is, though. It's fine. Now, I've actually been getting Isaac mixed up with Dante. I've been getting their names mixed up. Um, I've, I've said Dante a lot when I really meant Isaac. Um, it's a little strange that I've been friends with Isaac for so long, but not known this about him. Um, but, yeah. As the narrator says, no, it's fine. I think it's actually cool how quickly you learn stuff about people after meeting them for real. Exactly what I was saying. 
I can see Dante sitting on the couch, engulfed in his phone. Isaac seems a little mad and confronts him immediately. Hey, Dante, did you mess with those changes I made the other day? I thought I told you to play along with those. I do it for a reason. Yep, don't mess with the landlord's uh, house modifications. Dante's ears perk up and he immediately rises from the couch. I can tell he let his guard down, but he was eagerly awaiting our entrance. Whatever kind of first impression he was planning, his lack of awareness destroyed it. Man, can't you see that I'm looking out for you? If they found out about your tinkering, they'd dock you points. Or worse, I'm sure Delta has my back here. Messing with Argus just isn't worth it. Oof, pulling me into the, pulling me into the conflict already. Yeah. Putting me on the spot the second after you meet me. Nice. I scratch my head and Isaac looks at me, likely expecting my support. Oh, man, I really have to take a side here. I have Isaac's back here, his, his house, his rules. True, but it's only a matter of time before we're tried as accomplices. Argus may be many things, but forgiving isn't one of them. Look at how the zeros are treated. See what I mean? Ooh, the zeros. This one highlighted in red, the zeros. Stigma. Let's just change the topic, all right? I know I brought it up, but I don't want our first meeting to be an argument. Besides, I work for Argus. I know what I'm doing when I make changes. If by work you mean enforce the system on others, then sure. You do a lot of things that you report other people for doing. Hey, not fair. I may tamper with some hardware, but I never break laws. You'd be surprised how much you can bend the rules without breaking them. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but please, just trust me. You can participate in a broken system without being, what is it, an accomplice to the system? Is that what people say? Dante shrugs. Fine. Still the best deal on housing I've come across. Can you at least tamper with the system and let us skip that report tomorrow? <laughs> if you're gonna bend the rules, might as well do something practical with it. Uh. Uh, that one toes the line way too much. I'll have to pass. It's only an hour, just put in some earbuds or something. Yeah, hopefully they don't have a camera on the TV making sure that people watch it. I'm gonna go help Delta unpack and get a bit of rest in. All right, fair enough. But if Argus ever comes knocking, just know that I won't hesitate before turning you in. Nice. That eager to get me in handcuffs, huh? It's all part of the plan. <laughs> Dante steps forward with a laugh and holds out his hand. I was hoping to hang out for a bit, but I get that you're tired. If you want to bond or whatever, you know where to find me. If you want to bond or whatever. I shake his hand and give him a soft nod. If we're going to be roommates, it makes sense to bond. I let him know that I'll find him as soon as I get some sh shut eye. Perfect. And make sure to prod Isaac for me. He's way too tight lipped about the nightclub outing this weekend. Hey! Thanks for <laughs> ruining the surprise! Oh my gosh. Well, it was, it was practically written all over his face. Your fault, keeping secrets from your friends like that. I shrug. I knew that Isaac would plan a party, so it's no big deal. Dante smirks at me and then returns to his spot on the couch. I've met people like him before, an agent of social chaos. Your friend seems pretty cool, Isaac. Maybe I should start trusting you a bit more often. A group like us? <laughs> Add Taylor to the mix and we'll do great things. Yes, dream team. The four of us, Isaac scoffs, but then quickly displays a large smile as Dante becomes lost in his phone. <sighs> Head always in the clouds, that one. Almost prefer when he locks himself in his room to write. That's not nice. Before we pick up your luggage, though, hold on a sec. This has been a long time coming, and I never got a chance to at the airport. Oh. 
He steps forward and wraps his arms around me. I do the same, and we stand there for a few moments in a tight embrace. Yes. I have no idea why this is the first time I felt it, but this really was the fresh start I wanted. Yeah, it can be hard to hug someone the first time you see them, the first time you meet them in real life, but it has to happen. It has to happen. Welcome home, Delta. Just like Dante said. Great things. <laughs> Great things. Great things, old sport. I released the hug with a big smile on my face. This was it. Finally, the start of my new life. So yeah, something I'm noticing coming back, um, co coming back at us again is that um, Clay's storytelling style, maybe just the way that he thinks, maybe it's just the way some people think, um, is that he tends to put forward what's happening first and then explain, explain why it happened next. Um, especially if there's, you know, um, something that is seemingly a contradiction or uh, he, he will he will explain the contradiction after stating what happened um, and when I'm when I'm playing my mind immediately jumps to well wait a minute like like wait a minute don't haven't I known Isaac like forever um, how, how do I not know this about him but then he explains oh it, there are so many things that you can learn about someone just um, just from meeting them in real life for the first time. Um, but that's just something about the way I think, I guess. Experience pivotal fragment. Special delivery. Oh yeah, and I'm saying I'm saying that's coming back because I did notice it was a thing in, in Winds of Change too. Sometimes, finding yourself just means realizing how lost you really are. Oof. Yeah. Is that the system's logo? This same thing that is my pointer is the system's logo. Oh, talk about omnipresent. I enter Isaac's store, and I'm immediately taken back by how fancy it is. Yeah, looks like an looks like an Apple store, except you know, some some nice touches of I'm seeing places to sit back there, and some trees, fake or real, uh, lots of natural light, unlike an Apple store that you might find in the mall. Um, so you know. I, at least they're trying to imbue it with some some wholesome uh, some wholesome design concepts. Nice decor. The massive Argus Corporation, ah, oh, the Argus Corporation logo at the back is kind of blinding, though. In spite of that, I make my way toward it and closer to Isaac. He stands behind the register, lost in thought. But I could tell he was tired. That's why I have his box lunch in my hands. He forgot it at home, and I wasn't busy. It's so odd that he's both he's both like an attendant at this store, but he also turns people in for like jailbreaking their devices. Which is, uh, not not a reflection on him, but. Oh, the dystopia. It was a pretty harmless delivery, all things considered. I'm sure it did make him happy. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure getting your lunch would make you happy. Upon seeing me, his ears immediately perk up, and the appearance of stress melts away. Oh, wholesome. Delta! Oh, what a lifesaver you are! Oh, the only thing worse than working is working on an empty stomach. I promise it won't happen again. I'm not normally forgetful like this. <laughs> A choice between... Oh, 
I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna create some 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 negativity here. I'll never find a job with distractions like this. Oh, were you planning to apply around town today? My bad. I guess I should have asked Dante. He can afford a break. But while you're here, maybe you should go talk to my boss. He's always hiring. He gives me a soft smile and turns back toward his computer. As he faces his work once more, the smirk turns into a grimace. It was almost like his worries melted away as we spoke. Flattering. You'll never guess what happened. Ten of my installations this month have backfired. That means the people who bought them made illegal modifications. Basically, I lose the commission. Normally, I don't care, but ten in a row? Something's clearly going on. Hmm. He strokes his chin like he's lost in thought. It's it's odd how he hates when people mod their gear, but he does it all the time. I decide to ask him more about why. Nobody is around to spy or anything. Not just modifications, Delta. Illegal modifications. What I do is harmless, and I still follow the terms of service. These people are actively causing harm, using the tech to aid in crimes and stuff. Yeah, and, and apparently it is, it is um, hurting his, like, his individual ability to make money here. Right. Isaac wouldn't be the per type of person to commit a crime. Besides, Argus wouldn't care if they found out about my mods. That's why we have zeros. You can basically abandon the system entirely. That's why we have zeros. So when I mute an AI or change the colors of lights, it's nothing. I'd like to think that Argus has bigger problems. I mean, they clearly do. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Makes sense to me, and now I understand why Isaac's house is so under-equipped. Why implement invasive technology in your home if you don't have to, right? You could stick to the bare minimum. Just enough to satisfy Argus. I still feel like trash, though. It's my job to detect potential fraud. They slipped through my fingers, so I enabled their crimes. Argus can dock me points for that. Such a stupid rule. It is a stupid rule. That hardly seems fair. None of this seems to fit Isaac either, and it's odd. A man peddling wares he doesn't support, or even use in his own life. Willingly giving Argus eyes and ears everywhere except his own home. I vocalize these thoughts, and he shrugs. <sighs> a job is a job. That's what I always say. Besides, it could never hurt to stay on Argus's good side. Climb the ladder, and you won't be there when they tip it over. Yeah, I agree. I like working around people, too. And I mostly sell phones, anyway. <laughs> Big-scale installations like vehicles and home security are few and far between. Can't argue with selling a kid their first phone, though. Connecting them to the world. That's fair. I'd be a bit conflicted if I were in his situation, though. Argus has never done anything wrong, but they're still feared by a portion of the world. Working for them could be seen as working for the enemy by a lot of people. Argus is so secretive of about everything they do, it's hard not to theorize. Something just caught my eye, which was that the light that we see filtering through here is almost like... I feel like it was darkening the screen as if to like single the close of this scene, but now I see it, it's kind of darkening and brightening and going in and out, which I really love about this game. Um, and, and again, the Como Rebi, which I guess here the light is filtering through some windows, um, but we do, see, we do see the sunlight here very, uh, very subtly. 
it could be solved by some more transparency, but they're never willing to offer that. Something about a mysterious corporation running the world seems to strike more obedience. Hey, Delta. Let me see your phone. Huh? Come on. I promise not to scroll through your gallery. I have nothing to hide. Who ever does? Seriously, no. Phone up. I shrug and hand him my phone. He looks around the store to make sure nobody is watching. Then, a second later, he runs the phone along some sort of scanning device. Wanna know what I just did? He throws my phone back at me. Thankfully, I catch it. I just stole your identity. Oh, come on, knock it off. You wouldn't. Rule number one, never hand over your phone. Even if it's someone you trust, it's just not worth it. One simple scan, and I can do almost anything I want. Okay, yeah, that's scary. I could put your info on a new phone, impersonate you online. I could even overwrite the info on your current phone, change your identity. But I'd never do anything like that. Probably. Okay, now press the delete button. Before I can do anything, he starts laughing. <laughs> I'm just screwing with you, Delta. <laughs> I'd never mess around with important stuff like that. <sighs> I did a few things that might help you out while you look for a job, though. Play along with what I'm about to say. I need an excuse for the computer. He needs an excuse for the computer. He clears his throat and starts using an acting voice, like he's playing a part. <clears throat> Uh, terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Argus values you more than that. The next six months of all Argus-related subscription services are on the house. And not only that, but all Argus-associated venues will be 20% off. Is there anything else I can do for you at this juncture? Whoa. He winks at me, and I'm not sure what to do, or how to take what just happened. I appreciate the gesture, but there's no way what he just did was allowed. He said he'd never break the law, though. I trust him, despite the anxiety. There is no telling what may come from this. I just wanted to do a good deed, and now I feel immoral. Completing the opposite of what I desired, I leave Isaac with his meal. Okay, but... Well... Hmm. I don't know. How much did he bend the rules? I don't know. Maybe we'd have time to talk about this later. Yeah, it definitely isn't a good thing to be dragged into... Um... A breaking of the rules, but Isaac does claim that he never breaks the rules, he just bends them. That said, I don't really like when people joke around with with, um, important stuff, like identity theft. He probably could, if... Uh, he probably could have done something, with, knowing, knowing all that he, um... like the position of power that he is in at that store. Mm, what next, what next, what next? Uh, yeah, let's con well, actually, I want to I want to have a nice conversation with Dante because he did he did invite me to spend some time with him when on our first meeting. Experience heart to heart fragment. Dante won. Nice bedroom. Really nice bedroom. And just having just having such a big view of it looks like a big yard too. 
Um, but yeah, just having just having a nice view of the outside is always a plus for me, even though it is on the ground floor. Mm. And something about sleeping on the ground floor does not really uh, sit right with me. I prefer I prefer being a little high, higher up. I enter Dante's room, bringing him back his lost wallet. He was too busy to pick it up at the coffee shop, and I was out running errands. Isaac did warn me about him, though, always having his head in the clouds. Hey, Delta. Thanks for following through. There's no way I had time to do that myself. <laughs> yeah, a lost wallet is, is super important, as is bringing someone their lunch. According to my agent, I have 12 months left to finish this book. But I signed the contract, so this is my own doing. One crunch session after another. You get used to it, though. Thankfully, the press is really interested in my next project. That's good. I knew he was a writer, but I didn't know he was this successful. Until this point, he's never mentioned much about his career. It's probably now that we're alone. Everyone else in his life probably knows already. Well, now that you're here, maybe you want to hang out for a bit? I could use a little break from that empty page. It's taunting me. It usually does, but today it's pretty bad. As I've heard... Probably the stress of working under a deadline. You know, a, a year is a long time, but it doesn't feel like it. If I aim for a thousand words a day, I should be all right. Struggles of being a writer, am I right? But right now, I stand at zero. Zero. I have the story mapped out, but that opening scene is the worst. I gotta grab the reader, but also keep the momentum going. A moment later, he gets out of his chair and moves to his bed. Sitting at the edge, he points to the now empty chair. Go ahead, take a seat. Don't usually let people in my bed right after meeting them. <laughs> Reasonable. But I like your vibes, Delta. Tell me something about yourself, if you're down, that is. He lays back and looks up at the ceiling. That's such a vague question. I don't know where to start. I tell him that I wanted a new start. Things were getting stale. Huh, interesting. Things were getting stale here, too. Oh, good. Maybe I can bring some variety to this place. Although not if I am trying to be the most negative person I can be in all of my conversation choices. Guess this arrangement benefits all of us, then. And it was nice of your boyfriend to rent you a room. He's clearly teasing me with that implication. I don't buy it. You know, he doesn't let just anybody move in here. There's a reason it's been the two of us for years. Oh, okay, so Taylor is not a housemate here, just a friend. But, I mean, it's alright for him to call Isaac my boyfriend if he wants to. I guess I'm just saying you mean something to him. Keep that in mind, alright? A friendly piece of advice. Advice taken. When you write romance, you start to pick up on those things. Oh. Uh, I guess it's not really any of my business, though. Just advice, like I said. But none of us would be surprised if you two ended up together. <laughs> I nod and thank him for the advice. Just don't mess with those mods he makes. I got off super easy when you arrived. Trust me. Yep, it's so I won't. Bad, I just tell myself to take his insults as compliments. The people we hate are usually the ones we love the most. He wouldn't crack down on us if he didn't want us to grow. Yeah, and I was going to say about that, um, about that conversation that happened at my arrival. Like, having conflict out in the open is something that I struggle with, and it's, I guess, refreshing or good to see that they are handling that conflict. Oh, no, 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 it was the conflict about the, um, about the, the listening to music and, um, and, and the noise complaint. Yeah, I was thinking, like, it is good to handle conflicts instead of not handling them or being passive aggressive about them. How to handle conflict well. 
a thing. It's a thing to strive for. He sure likes talking about Isaac, huh? I try to change the subject and shift it more towards Dante. Curiosity takes over my mind, so I ask him about his next book. I wish I could talk about it, but I can't. <laughs> you probably can't. NDA. I'm under a strict NDA and a bunch of pesky red tape. In fact, I think I've already said way more than I should. Okay. Fair. I ask him to tell me more about himself, then. Oh, yeah, I, f <laughs> I feel like I gave a super vague answer to his question to tell him something about myself. I was like, I just want a fresh start. Things are getting stale. Like, I would like to know some more about my own past life. I, my, my counselor asked me the same question, and, and we were never privy to seeing my answer about my past life. So I, I'm, I'm still curious, still in the dark about that. I don't know about that one, Delta. I'm a writer, so I know a lame story when I see one. Oh, come on. Everyone has a story. Basically, grew up in a library. All I did was read books, day after day. Grew up in a library? Picked up the skills to write my own, and here we are! A few book deals later, and I live under crushing stress. Almost makes me wish that my initial success was a fluke. <laughs> we all have foresight, except for where we need it the most. I'm sure that he, I'm sure that he doesn't regret being where he is now, having made the progress that he has made. I think that's all you'll get out of me right now, though. Maybe we should grab a drink sometime, chat a bit more. I mean, if you're down for that, I'd suggest the club. But that night is going to be a drunken blur. If we're talking about next week, however, my schedule is wide open. Not not to mention being like impossible to talk over over loud noise. As a person who has who who defaults to a, a quiet voice, yeah, it's just impossible to talk in loud places and like actually have a good conversation. Uh oh, are you asking me out on a date? <laughs> no way! Oh, turns down. Your best friend's crush? <laughs> totally scummy. Uh, unless you'd be open to a group arrangement. Kidding. Kinda. Not many stories go that route. Could be interesting. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I'm wondering if he no if this took place after after I responded positively to to Isaac's um to, to Isaac's interest in me. Which it would be fascinating if it would be really fascinating if this conversation changed, depending on how I responded to um, to, to Isaac's interest. It's hard for me to tell, which I don't I don't really like. Um, but let me try to assume that this took place after that conversation and everything is out in the open, because that kind of seems like what is going on here. He sits upright and tilts his head to the side. I can tell that it's a sign. He wants me out of his chair. However, before I make it out of the room, he calls my name. Hey, Delta. I gotta say, you remind me of somebody. This character from my first book. They're an outsider, like you. Oh, fascinating. I tilt my head, confused as to why he'd bring this up. Well, let's just say I have a deep connection with them. With who? When you told me about your past, they immediately popped into my head. It, it, it probably sounds weird to hear, but that made it easier for me to talk. Oh, he's referring to the character in his book. Oh, okay. It makes sense to me, even if I can't describe why. This character traveled to a new city. They ended up falling in love with somebody they shouldn't. You know, like those old tragedies, but with modern flair. That's real encouraging. That sounds pretty cool, actually, is the true response to that. If this character is like me, I wonder what happens to them. Uh, 
Yes, from a purely hypothetical standpoint, I wonder what happens to them. I asked Dante to tell me some more, intrigued at relating to his fiction. Oh, they die. Hopefully things work out better for you, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. And hopefully, um, hopefully my romantic pursuits also turn out better. Because he did say that the character fell in love with someone they shouldn't. Oh. With a laugh, he turns his chair around and starts typing away. I guess that was my cue to leave. For real this time. I wonder what nonsense he is typing, because I find that I cannot immediately start typing any cohesive thoughts after, um, like, like right after conversation with someone. Especially if that person is still in the room. It's probably more of a gesture that he wants me to leave than actually <laughs> typing anything important. What an odd note to end on. Instead of focusing on what he said, I focus on what he didn't say. Our talk inspired him, even if he didn't want to admit it. As I see myself out, that empty page is now almost anything but. Impressive, maybe he did get some great thoughts out of that conversation. Or, or great creative energy. Hopefully this new story has a bit of a happier ending. Yeah, something that I'm struggling with so far is the you can you can do these fragments in any order um, without receiving any direction as to do they take place in the past in a concrete set in stone order and I'm just experiencing them out of order or do they actually happen in the order in which I experience them. Um, it would be nice just to be told. The order in which you experience them is the order in which they happen. But I don't think that's the case, because clearly clearly there are some conversations, like the conversations um, in which I moved in, those are clearly in taking place earlier than some of these later conversations. Um, but, I mean, speculatively, maybe the heart to hearts take place in the order in which I experience them. Whereas these others are, are set in stone. I don't know. Okay, on to the next one. And clearly I, clearly I still have to unlock... This one looks like a conversation with uh, Taylor. And I'm wondering if this guy is, is the counselor. Which I don't know his name. Uh, there's a group text and there's a thing over here. Let's continue with Experience IRL. pivotal fragment. Meeting Taylor. Oh, good, good. It's good to, good to experience meeting Taylor. I need to meet you people. Someone out there wants to be you just as much as you want to be others. Good looking place. Um, looks like it would be extremely echoey. <laughs> I see high ceilings, not a lot of um, not a lot of soft surfaces, and very rectangular. Um, I feel like this this place is a little bit um, a little bit too chic and urban for my for my tastes. I, I prefer cozier places. But all right, enough critique. I sit at the table with Isaac and Dante, slowly chipping away at my dinner. Oh, it has dinner too. Eating as a group isn't something we do every day, but today was special. I finally get to meet Taylor. He's pretty busy, so I've only seen him in the group chat. I know he's a streamer and an internet personality, but I don't know much else. 
So I guess I guess I have not looked him up online because I don't I don't know that much about him. Probably good not to make him a, a, a first impression, <laughs> the persona that they broadcast in their streams. Probably not a good idea. It's cool that someone popular like him was taking time to hang out with me, though. I've heard a lot about the guy, so I signed up for this group outing with no hesitation. I'm told this is the spot for our group. Oh yeah, I am noticing that there is a group, a, a large table here with plenty of chairs in the foreground. Good place to be. Wherever they want to hang out, it's usually here. And whenever they want to hang out, it's usually here. Apparently, they have the best hangover breakfast, too. Damn, Delta! You're inhaling that! Yeah, it's delicious. Can't tell us we're exaggerating anymore, then. This is the best place in town. Full stop. Apparently it is. Yeah, I'm now taking a peek at the, at the menu back there. Oh my gosh! On the food menu, there's Minecraft something. Minecraft something, pack sandwich, and Majira strawberry. For question mark, question mark, question mark, dollars. Loving, loving the Easter egg. That's hilarious. Um, looks like special drinks include salted caramel, pumpkin latte, latte inferno? I've never heard of that before. I wonder if it's a if it's uh, a, a reference to like Dante's Inferno, chai latte, tea earl grey, chai, uh, witty witty cherry and rebos. There's a seasonal coffee there. And yeah, nothing else terribly um, terribly fascinating on the rest of the menu. Yeah. Definitely excited to come here Saturday morning. It's part of your master plan, isn't it? Oh my gosh, a master plan. Hey, nice try, Dante. No more info till Taylor gets here. And even then, we should let him and Delta get to know each other. Don't you think the nightclub would be better for that? You know how Taylor gets after a couple drinks. <laughs> yeah, guess you're right. Total lightweight, that one. <laughs> oh my gosh, same. Um, I've never had a friend who planned entire... In, entire entire uh, 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 days of uh, things to do. But that's cool. Before anyone else can talk, Taylor steps in. Hey, is that a compliment or an insult? <laughs> yes. With a scoff, he sits down beside me and holds out a fist. I bump mine against his, and then he lets out an exaggerated yawn. Resting one arm on the back of the booth, it felt like he was about to pull me in. Ah, nice to meet you, Delta. Even prettier in person. <laughs> Can you please move your arm? Oh. I'm gonna romance all of them. Gotta gotta stir the pot a bit here. Cause some cause some chaos. Oh, I was talking about me. <laughs> I guess you look pretty good as well. I'm kidding. You're a knockout. Don't forget it. Appreciate it. <sighs> Still your goal to flirt with all my friends, I see. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. Oh no, that's my goal. My goal is to flirt with all your friends, Isaac. He moves his arm from where it was, and then points at the table. A pair of headphones rests in front of Dante. They get Taylor's attention. Oh, those are the headphones my chat by? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh and he kept his end of the bargain, Isaac? No more loud music keeping you up at night? Yeah, $50 will buy a decent pair of headphones. Surprisingly, he did. Oh, good. Perfect. No more fighting now, you hear me? Someone's got to keep you kids in line. 
Oh, that's why he said, that's why, that's why Taylor said, you gotta settle this at home. Because Taylor doesn't live with us. And so, of course, okay, that makes sense now. Anyway, let's get down to business. Oh, so cute. This whole nightclub thing, I looked at their website and not a single special event is listed. Hmm. Yeah, this is private, just for us. Oh, really? That means the whole news thing probably won't happen. But the other plans haven't changed. We still have an open bar. Perfect. That's all I cared about anyway. <laughs> Wait, what happened? That's a pretty big change to gloss over, man. Why was the media even a possibility in the first place? Yeah. Being on the news while partying doesn't really sound like a good idea. So, I don't know. Oh, right. My bad. They never announced the event, so nobody knows they canceled it. The plans that I have are still in full effect, though. Don't worry. Okay. And those are... Uh... I'm introducing all of you to a new friend. Another new friend. He's in town, and he said drinks are on him. Whoa. That's all you get, though. The rest is a surprise. For real. <laughs> There's more? That seems like all of it to me. A friend is visiting and buying us drinks. You time to put Delta's arrival, too. There's still more? Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> oh, definitely not getting any bad vibes about this. Or maybe maybe he's just maybe he's just being that way because the plans really weren't all that worth keeping a secret after all. I don't know. Oh I can tell he's acting. There's a bit more to his plans, for sure. Oh, I've got it. I know who we're meeting. Huh? Isaac went and got himself a sugar daddy. <laughs> I guess Argus isn't paying oh good gosh. enough anymore. What? No! That makes perfect sense, actually. Unless you'd like to prove us wrong. Oh! <laughs> I see what you're doing. Nice try. It's not going to work. Just wait until Friday. It's not even that far away. Speaking of which, you're all still down to pregame? Sounds good to me. I'm making a big list of snacks, too. <laughs> Again, the emphasis on on junk food being, like, a, a necessity, a, a, an essential element of partying. Um, I don't know. Not something that I have ever considered. Great. I'll pick up some of the booze and juice. Let's get started around 4 p.m. Sound good? Oh, starting real early in the night, okay. Day drinking? Day drinking. Oh. <laughs> I notice that mine has the discount Isaac assigned to my identity. Ah uh, yes, so this does take place after I delivered uh, his, his, uh, his meal to him. I need to get outside of the mindset that Things are pre-written by default, written to be experienced in a certain order. Like, if I can just trust that this is only being shown because I already played the earlier scene in which Isaac gives me that Argus discount, I'm like, okay, I can enjoy this game. I, I am enjoying it so much. There's just little things that are jumping out at me because, because. I guess we are programmed to think linearly in default, to think that uh, a store, to, to, to treat games as, as the same way that we treat books. This is probably a good time to ask him more about it. It still feels wrong. Oh, he did that to you as well? <laughs> well me too, I gotta admit. Oh my gosh. I mean, okay, I, I don't... Hopefully the narrator will not feel as bad as about it since since everyone in the friend group has gotten this treatment. Hmm. All of that stuff is just taken out of his paycheck. And if it's not, he's just abusing his friends and family discount. Oh, I hope it's not taken out of his paycheck. He's definitely not as dark and brooding as you think. Oh, he's way too generous. Money, 
dude. I just wanted to be nice and impress Delta. Besides, it's a valid cover-up. Nobody really wants to accept pity money. The fact that I'm jobless is now more apparent than ever. Dude, bro just, dude just moved into a new place, new city, new life. Um, I'm, but I'm sure being jobless is one of those things that really detracts from your points. I appreciate Isaac's gesture, but I did save up a lot before moving. It'll help me out, but it wasn't necessary. I thank him, just to clear the air. No problem. Glad to know you appreciate it. I always want to know, no matter how it comes across. It just felt better to remove any chance of offending you. He glances at Taylor as he says that. I'm assuming he didn't react well to Isaac's pity money. But I can actually understand how that would wound someone's pride. Well, I've come yeah, to love it, I kind of trust me. But right now, there's an even bigger dilemma at hand. He opens the menu and looks it up and down. Just what do I order? My man. Yep, food is a serious business. It's cool that this is the place that is a that that he's a regular at, and yet he still um, has a hard time choosing what to order, which probably speaks to the fact that he enjoys everything on the menu. Good stuff. Um, heart to heart conversation with him is not yet open. I kind of want to continue with the plot, but I also feel like these conversations would be happening throughout um, the week, so I don't want to go too far ahead. Let's go for Experience a... Experience Supplemental Fragment. Shady Business. Shady Business. Let's go for a Supplemental Fragment. I'm <laughs> looking outside, there's a big group of people who just, just walked by. I should take a break after this. I don't know what time it is. Hmm. An awkward silence permeates through the group chat. Hey. Why'd it get so quiet in here? Oh, hey. I'm just at work. Oh. Trying to close a pretty big sale. Well, now I feel bad. Good luck with that one. Also, I'm streaming with Taylor right now. Uh, now I really feel both bad and excluded. Wait, Taylor accepts guests now? Everyone wanted to meet me after the headphone incident. Apparently, oh I became a meme in his chat. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense. Wonderful. Yep, I'm Dante the Headphone Guy. Dante the Headphone Guy. Your parents will be so proud. <laughs> I'm writing them a letter as we speak, and I can't talk to you anymore. Aren't you saying this now? Oh my gosh. Oh, already forgetting your friends. I think I've found my true calling. He's doing a good job, actually. <laughs> he should stream in his spare time. You really think people want to watch me write? <laughs> you have lots of followers. I'm sure they'd love to see the process. And maybe I'll do it after this weekend. I'm way too excited for our nightclub trip. Speaking of which, my viewers are a little upset. Are you sure I can't tell them anything about this, Isaac? No. Not even a little clue? Oh my gosh. Nope. Your viewers are upset because you have not been informed by your friend about what you will be doing this weekend, and you cannot share those weekend plans with them. And in other news, the sale was closed. Drinks are on you then? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Already taken care of. Wait, seriously? Seriously? Wow. Taylor, I think Isaac is caught up in shady business. Our paragon of virtue away. Paragon of virtue? Seriously. He's always home late, and now he's even dodging our questions. He just wants to treat us, reading into it too much. 
I feel like Paragon, Paragon of Virtue, portraying him as quote unquote the good guy, is just a little ironic because he does, um, because he doesn't like the system. He 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 modifies his home to reduce the amount of technology in it. Um, far from falling into the trope of good guys, bad guys, um, guys who are characters who are all morally gray. Um, it just is is weird that he's seen as as the good guy in this group. Maybe because he is a retail worker, works for the system. Um, but I mean, even that is not all of his identity. You say that now. Come on, man. When have I ever lied to you? Are you wanting me to get out the list? Oh my gosh. The list. The list of all the times he's lied to us. Oh my goodness. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whereas there are six of those. Alright, one more of these. Experience supplemental fragment. Betrayal. Gonna be home late tonight. Oh, cute, cute pit bull mix out there. At least I think it's a mix because it's larger than a pit bull. I think. Do pit bulls get? Um. I don't. Know. Anyway. Again? <laughs> He's gonna be home late again. Again. What's going on? Nothing really. Just a lot of sales to close. Making the cash lately, huh? I wish. <sighs> well, not really. I already capped my commission for the month. Wait, what? It's a sucky arrangement. What incentive is there to sell products? Exactly. Uh, I don't want to get fired? Mm. Oh. Besides, I'm hoping to nab that promotion next year. Putting in this extra work just seems like the right thing to do. Hmm. You're still on about that? Of course. I don't know if that's a good idea. Why not? You? With more responsibility? <laughs> okay, we're fighting now. Oh! I'm prepared. No. Remember what I said about fighting in here? Either way, good luck with the promotion. I bet it's already yours. Thanks, Taylor. At least you believe in me. I never said I didn't believe. You didn't have to. Yeah, we can read between the lines. What lines? I totally plan to treat all the people that wounded for me. So don't think I'll forget about this betrayal, Dante. Oh my gosh. Betrayal? I'm just looking out for you, man. Don't want you to bite off more than you can chew. I'm honestly surprised. Hmm? that time with your nose buried in books. <sighs> Figured you'd know how to read a room by now, too. Yeah, yeah, continuing on with his point, especially if this was a text conversation, feels a little combative. Okay, we're fighting. <laughs> I'm prepared. Oh my gosh. How much of me is going to rub off on these characters? I wonder. I wonder. All right, I am going to take a break for now. We are about halfway through these six um, um, core fragments. I, I can't remember what they're called. What are they Experience called? Experience pivotal <laughs> fragment. Locked out. I mean, they are. They are. Pivotal in a sense that they are essential to the storyline. So we're about halfway through the pivotal fragments. I'm not sure how long 
Uh, the demo is going to go on. If we're going to have even more to explore after this, or or what? Um, but yeah, it's, um, I still I'm. This is going really great so far. I'm really enjoying it. Really reminds me of The Great Gatsby, but I like these characters. Um, yep. Yeah, I totally feel like feel like Nick, uh, Nick Carraway in Great Gatsby, being like this, uh, this kind of more passive observer. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, I love these characters. I. I feel like they're very likable in compare in contrast with the Great Gatsby characters, um, and, and I, I love the group dynamic. And uh, yeah, I'm really really excited to see where this leads. So, uh, thank you for coming to watch me this time, and see you guys next time. Oh, gotta save. Gotta save.